want to take this um, opportunity to really say that this research project wouldn't have been at all possible if it weren't for Archaeology Scotland existing and the Adopt a Monument scheme um, in particular um, because working with Archaeology Scotland and in particular Cara and Phil on the Adopt a Monument scheme gave us an, a real valuable opportunity to do this type of research which I really honestly believe wouldn't have been possible without such a network. Um, and from an academic point of view, we could answer very specific research questions, um, which I'll just introduce in a second. But the Adopt a Monument scheme, um, the geographical diversity um, the, of monuments that, that um, they have on their records, the, the kind of active and enthusiastic communities that are involved, um, was key to the success of Accord. Um, and uh, yeah, in particular because of the questions we were asking as well, but we, five of, out of ten of our groups involved in Accord were Adopt a Monument, the ones with the stars next to them. Um, so the types of research questions we were asking were related to the use of 3D digital technology, and John very briefly introduced the concept there of photogrammetry and RTI, so those were key to our research. And how using co-producing um, heritage records using 3D vids, and I'll show some, some, some examples in a minute, how that might alter people's relationships to sites and places, give people a different sense of ownership perhaps, um, and also how already existing um, social values associated with sites um, might transform. Um, so really we were exploring issues relating to your... Um, place making, your values that you attach to these heritage places you look after, your stewards of, and why you invest in those places. So that is when heritage gets personal, to be honest, because actually often these are very hard research questions to ask and to look into um, because they're often related to very emotional or personal attachments to that place of story. Um, and really, again, that's where Adopt a Monument was key because of the support network that was already established and the trust and relationships that we could tap into through Cara and Phil and the scheme. So that really allowed us to delve into those issues. And I'm pleased to say that we have three academic research papers in press that um, uh, you can read more about our results because in 10 minutes I don't have the time. So now I'm just going to skip through and you can read at your leisure about the, the kind of really rich results we've had. Um, but uh, I'm going to skip through and give a sense of the diversity of the, the monuments we've recorded. So as, as John just presented there, that's our 3D model of the Camus and Gale Stone. Um, and I have it on my laptop, so at lunchtime, if you want to come and have a spin and a play and a zoom around it, please, please come and have a look. Um, sorry, that's got in the transfer from Mac to PowerPoint. It's got a bit corrupted. Never mind. But in order to make these models, you dance around the stone. And what's great about these technologies is you can use digital cameras from your smartphone to a nice Nikon, whatever you have to hand. The software is clever enough to calibrate different cameras together and stitch all these photographs taken from all different angles, upside down in the nooks and crannies, and it stitches it together and creates 3D models. So it's very accessible and it's based in consumer level technology. So it's quite an empowering technology to use. Another example is with the Colin Tribe Blenderu Development Trust and their particular interest group. Um, interest in the history and heritage and archaeology of the place. And this was a nice story because through photogrammetry, we really kind of reappropriated this particular monument back into the community. It had actually been, well, it wasn't forgotten about as such, but people didn't really bring it up in the first focus group we held with the group. It wasn't mentioned as a site of interest until a particular um, person called Todd who've lived in Australia for 20 years, um, got very emotional and, and excited about recording this one monument. So we checked out there's a group, kind of nervously to see, see if it'd be worth recording. Um, and now, um, as a result of recording the monument, it's become a really significant 
memorial for the group and they, because it dates to, sorry, the Gallipoli, it references two twins who died with, between, with 44 days between them um, in the First World War and one of them died at the Battle of Gallipoli. So last year they had a special dawn service at this monument. And I truly believe that if we hadn't come together as a community and sort of reappropriated this monument into the kind of consciousness, um, that may not have happened. So it's a nice story. It's also powerful for rediscovery um, and photogrammetry. In the, um, again, in Cullen Drive, we used it to record this particular um, Neolithic or Early Bronze Age cut mark stone. And um, it's now um, pride of place on their trail, there, uh, which you can now walk around. So that's great. Um, the Bresse history, is that how I say it? Bresse? Bresse? Um, history group. Oh, um, another nice example where there's a genealogical connection to the place we recorded. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, just quickly, yeah, so one of the members in the group was actually related to the old minister who lived in that house. Um, and uh, back a few generations. Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm going to have to try that, see if that works. Shouldn't make things on a Mac. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, again, that's um, got real significance for the group. Um, I think it's on a timer. Okay, well, just go with the okay. timer. I'm running out of time anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll skip that, but ask me about that model. I've got a print of it with me. Glasgow Necropolis, check out their appeal. They're using our 3D model um, and 3D prints to help them raise funds in order to restore the Monteith Mausoleum. So that's a really nice example as well, where um, 3D visualization and laser scanning, they've got far more involved in that as well, since um, Accord um, can be used for promotion um, and, and res restoration ends. Um, and the arc Access Archaeology Group in the US was fantastic and really I've brought this up to show the quality we can achieve and this, this 3D model is insanely accurate, it's absolutely fantastic and again it's a nice story because since our work with the group who were really passionate and saw it as an icon of their heritage in the US, um, archaeologists it's reignited their interest in the monument and HES have gone out to do a survey of the site and really, I, I, I think we, we played a small part, it was mainly the community that's been pushing that forward, but we played a small part with having this scan and in, in enabling that work. Um, so just to finish, an exciting announcement. Our archive, which um, is copyright common, so freely accessible, um, is going to be published on the Archaeology Data Service this month. Finally. <laughs> and I'll probably hear a few gasps of, at last, because it's been a wee bit of a wait. Um, but here's some previews. Um, so that's what you'll come to when you search for the Accord project on the Archaeology Data Service. And then you can delve into each of our 10 projects separately. So that's the Arden American Community Archaeology Group. And you can download and documents, more information, that's statements of significance that we co-wrote with the group, so it's an enriched archive, so it's not just 3D models, it gives you context and the significance and the social values that surround those 3D models. Um, and you can look at all our photos and <laughs> some embarrassing pictures up there, I do apologise. And what's really exciting is we've been used as a test platform um, for the ADS <coughs> to have a 3D model viewer um, so you can actually interact with the 3D models on the website and also the, this thing called reflectance transformation imaging, ask about that later, but again you can interact with these on the website. So that's really exciting and freely accessible and there for people to, to use. So thank you for taking part and please keep in touch with us and we, we're always keen to hear, hear our legacies. Thanks.